One other factor to remember in running a live steamer versus an electrically powered model is that the amount of power is totally dependent on boiler pressure. If we run out of if boiler pressure runs low, we are not going anywhere. We just had barely enough pressure to make it over the hump there here on the grade. Okay, at this point here we're out of both fuel and steam pressure. So, first thing to refuel, we'll close the throttle. Then underneath the cab, at the bottom of the lubricator, is the blowdown valve. Just push it gently backwards to open it, and then reopen the throttle. What we're doing is draining out the condensation that builds up in the lubricator as the oil is displaced and also relieving any boiler pressure. Once the boiler is fully depressurized, we can refill the uh, uh, boiler with water if necessary. As it happened, I had pumped some water in just before, just before the fuel ran out this time. We've got three quarters of a glass, so that's plenty. Close the throttle at that point. Close the blowdown valve by gently turning it in the forward direction. Does not, and you don't just barely finger tight, you don't need a lot of muscle on it. And at this point, we can refill the lubricator. Make sure the blowdown valve, valve is closed first before you refill, otherwise, you'll wind up wasting steam oil. And we'll refill the lubricator just as we did in the initial steam up procedure. Okay, we refill the gas tank at this point. And once the gas tanks refill, we can relight our fire. And that's pretty much what the fire should look like properly, uh, properly burning. Should be towards the back end of the fire of the boiler, not the front, not the front end. The other thing I do once the fire is started is start a stopwatch. I do this also when I'm initially firing up the engine. It gives me an idea of approximately how long it'll take to get steam up and also once it's uh, running how much runtime I've, uh, I've got. Typically from a cold start, uh, the aircraft shale will take about 10 minutes, roughly 10 minutes to get steam up. If the boiler's already warm like it is now, we should have steam in about 5 minutes on it and typical runtime is 20 minutes to maybe 25 minutes if you re if you refill uh, I'd say the 25 minute figure you'll get if you refill the boiler right after um, 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 fueling up after rather after uh, after she's got steam up run times will vary depending on uh, 
you know, the outside temperatures, while well, it's a mild day in the 80s today, so we're doing pretty good. Uh, if you're running, say, in the 40s or close to freezing, uh, on it's a little more, you can expect shorter run times and less uh, power. Also, while we're waiting for steam pressure to build, we can oil the drive line. And of course we have to clear the condensation out of the cylinders. Okay, we are almost out of fuel at this point, so I'm going to stop, uncouple the train. And run off onto the steam up track at this point. If the locomotive runs out of steam, uh, runs out of fuel on the line, you can still have steam uh, pressure to run for di uh, some distance thereafter. How far it will depend on how much boiler pressure is left, or whether you're going up or down grade, and how much of a train you're uh, 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 pulling. If you want to kill the fire, we just turn the gas valve off, close the throttle. Remember, the engine is very hot at this point. Carefully open the blow down, and then. Open your throttle to relieve the boiler pressure. Okay, once the engine's cooled down thoroughly, close the blowdown valve. I usually refill the uh, boiler to the three quarter level point on the site class, so it should be ready for next uh, run, and can wipe it down with a rag at this point.